I just wanted to play these because we often talk about how serious Joe Rogan is on his program that yeah. where he misses a lot of jokes. We've yeah. we found his weakness. <laughs> oh, uh, Cat Williams. <laughs> I've found something he can't help but get involved with, and that's the 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 boyish fun that Dan Soder brings to the table. And I've noticed this a couple times when Soder's been on. Joe Rogan likes doing voices. Oh yeah. <laughs> like so that, there's a lot of times where you know Mark Norman will be on there or whoever like a jokey guy and they'll be firing off puns and one-liners at Joe whiz right over his head. He's not he doesn't participate in that kind of stuff. I realized after Dan Soder's appearance this is what he lo- he Joe is a voice guy. <laughs> So, uh, Dan Soder was the first guest right after the Cat Williams episode. It was it was a it was a good one. I also think Dan Soder's special was very good. Um, so go check that out on the road. Best one that's come out this year, I think. So that's far. on YouTube, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It was very good. It was only forty minutes. Perfect. Um, it was it was great. It, his I think his best special yet, probably. Interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, Soder was on Rogan promoting that, and I noticed that Rogan is a voice guy. Like I think. I think I would like Rogan to tour with this type of material. So they're talking about uh, Cat Williams here. I forgot how good a weed you have. <laughs> <laughs> this is Cat Williams weed. Uh, is that really? Yeah. Oh, shit. I'm going to start talking shit on everyone in the business. <laughs> and that ain't never been a day that Shane Gillis ain't never texted me. You're gay. <laughs> <laughs> always calling me gay. Um, oh, we had Cat Williams ride the racing simulator, and I filmed it and put some of it up on Instagram. But he's amazing. like, this is how he drives. This is a normal thing. He does this because he does this in real life. Yeah, I would love for <laughs> Cat it's not it's voice. not as good as Soder's, but it's better than you would think Rogan would be. Well, he does do voices a lot. Like Kinnison is his favorite thing to do, I think. It's yeah, and he does Ron White a lot. Yes. We found I found a silliness in Joe Rogan that I wasn't aware existed really. Yeah, that it's can be not, a new tack to get on his good side. Other than complimenting him, you can just do a fun voice. It yes. Was, it would have been very funny if he was like, Shane Gillis text me, yeah, gay. And he's like, What do you what do you mean by that? <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> self-hate <laughs> he's like you ain't never gonna be nothing baby you suck <laughs> it's like i know cat <laughs> joe's just like a cat sorry i'm talking to dan right now <laughs> <laughs> completely serious <laughs> It'll work. Yeah, go, yeah. His David. He's the new David Goggins. Yeah. He's like, pain is good. Feel everything bad, pimping. I'm out here golfing in five thousand dollars sneakers. Dude, he, the books thing is still the funniest shit in the world. Bro, he doubled down and and then some. Respect. He, he said, Listen, this is this is Joe letting his hair down. Like usually he'd be like, well, actually, Cat had some interesting points on on the, the literature that he reads. You know what's funny though is normally when this kind of shit comes up on Rogan, Rogan's like, I believe him. I believe everything. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's what I'm saying is Dan has brought out like a, a boyish wonder in, in Rogan where he's he, he doesn't mind shitting on people. He's in voice mode. And when he's in voice mode, he can be silly. Right. <laughs> Crazy shit is fucking Bro, hilarious. He was saying, I went to the library and I got 20 <laughs> books at a time because that's all they would let you get. And I would be there three times a week. What? If? Oftentimes I'd be reading eight books simultaneously <laughs> because I have the original <laughs> book and then I have books and annotated and <laughs> i love it the the idea that a librarian sees him coming and gets nervous <laughs> i want i want rogan doing cat williams yeah <laughs> on stage like it's just the way the way will ferrell did george bush <laughs> you know, I, want, I want a cat williams rogan hour <laughs> that whole segment was so funny but we do have a little more of it yeah let's hear let's hear a little more because this is also uh uh an interesting point by Rogan. This is my favorite part, actually. Yeah, yeah. Like I asked him to do the club. I go, you want to do do a spot at the club? Somebody goes, I'm an arena act. <laughs> <laughs> Just to clarify with someone like that. Like, is... I do arenas too. It's yeah. okay. Yeah, like, goes, the club's amazing. Can't. Yeah. Not enough people. No. <laughs> <laughs> that a guy that just got paid over two hundred million dollars again. <laughs> <laughs> for his podcast has to plead with cat williams to be i i sell tickets cat <laughs> like, when, was last time, when was the last time he did a club like he might go do it and go oh this is great 
<laughs> That's the thing is like cat the, the mothership is perfect. That that place the walls would break down if Cat Williams walked in there. <laughs> so I forget, I was listening. I don't know if did you catch uh, um, Kevin James? Uh, not yet. I just saw it this morning. I didn't. Um, I, I, I you think it's worth listening to? So I'm halfway through, and I got to be honest, I've enjoyed the entire thing. Wow. Really? Because <laughs> that shocked David. <laughs> I forgot he was here. <laughs> um, but they were talking about stand up, and it was heavy on like stand up and stuff like that. So I thought it was really interesting. I'm not hmm. done with it, but I'm halfway through. But he was talking about how he still gets nervous. He talked about how he had like a corporate gig recently, and he he like hated himself and wanted to die. Okay. It was very, it was very good. Uh, um, I'll, I'll have to check that out because I that liked, cat's insurance I, doesn't allow him to do small rooms. Yeah, but no, but Rogan that might said, be true. Rogan said that the small room sits one ten to one twenty, and the big room only sits two fifty. I thought it was more like four. Oh, I thought it was more than that. Yeah, he said two fifty. I'll tell you, that's what annoys me about Hinchcliffe uh, not doing Kill Tony at Skankfest. Mm -hmm. He honestly. Tony treated Lewis the way Cat Williams treated Joe Rogan. Right. Where he goes, we're an arena act now. <laughs> right. And I was like, you do it at the mothership every week. And in my mind, that was 400 seats. That's, you know, so it's smaller than Laugh Boston. Correct. I guess. You know, that and Kill Tony writes a tight shift. We have a friend of the show, Al Mean, has a golden ticket with Kill Tony. And he was at yes. the live show. And he had teased that if I went up there and did a minute on your live show, they're going to take my golden ticket. <laughs> Yes, I did. I actually saw uh, Al Amin. I didn't. I wasn't aware of him. Um, I've gotten more into Kill Tony recently, but I saw him on your show and went back and found his episode. He really gave it to Donnell Rollins, wouldn't you say? Well, for a first year comedian, what a tough position to be in. Yeah, no, he did a good job. Um, I that's that's perfect for you, David. I think you should try signing up for Kill Tony or something. Well, Definitely. that'd be nice. Maybe you'll make a trip one of these days. That'd be sweet. Yeah. Now that we have so many friends of the show down in Austin there. Yeah. Yeah. I hope, definitely. I hope, yeah. And if you get if you get on Kill Kill Tony, just go up and read that fake gun PSA and then leave. <laughs> right. <laughs> so well, they probably Texas. I'm sure they're used to that type of humor. That's true. <laughs> that's definitely true. Now, I'm uh, so glad that we watched that clip with Dan Soder and Joe Rogan there. Of course, that's the answer to what Opie would talk about. They could just do silly voices. Oh, that would be fun. <laughs> Joe, do you ever talk to Doggy? <laughs> every time every time Rogan says something that Opie likes, he'll just be like, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, I think they'd get along great. <laughs> what I agree. are you talking about? <laughs> but the, the, the thing that really made me notice um, the silliness in Joe throughout the episode, because Cat Williams is tough to not try and do the voice if you're talking about him, you know? Like he's got such a distinct voice, but then, you know, Soder's constantly doing voices. So if they're talking about Putin or something like that, that typically that's where Joe gets more serious, but not when old Danny Soder's in the room. <laughs> but, uh, uh, there's, there's more from them and, uh, real quick on Twitter, shout out DJ Electra. She also owns the hat and it looks great. Blindmike.net oh, buy the merch. Oh, thank you. Uh, Electra Fry. I appreciate that. And all you creepy weirdos, it, you just see the hat. So don't don't worry about it. <laughs> um, but uh, this one is just Russian voice. Yeah. So they they get into a topic where Joe's usually more serious, and, right. and but he has fun with it. God bless him. Thank God. This is what he was saying. He said uh, everything in our way should be carefully but decisively removed through deportation. Navalny said in a video dressed as a dentist, <laughs> comparing immigrants to dental cap. It is funny saying like, "Yeah, he lets his hair down. He has fun with it." And this is the of the clip. <laughs> we'll get there. Dan, Dan will bring the fun out of him. Yeah. So he was dressed up. He was doing costume work. <laughs> He's like, he like has his hands like this. He's like, I know we're having fun here, but really, we've got to get rid of immigrants. Maybe it was a sketch. <laughs> yeah, he's just doing an SNL sketch. <laughs> he's like, live from Moscow. I mean, it's political prison. Maybe he, someone said, you know, Navalny, the best way to get this information of this tumor. <laughs> Everyone... I want you to be over the top against the immigrants. <laughs> over the top. Like they're Crit. fucking cavities. Pull out. And I am the dentist. Yeah. Navalny take care of casualties <laughs> for you. They go, we'll call it laughing gas. <laughs> and it's all sketches done like and they just trick this dude into doing this. <laughs> it's not it's very nice. It's it warms your heart to see Rogan having fun like that with comedians. It's not that often he does it, but I'm glad he's got 
he's got you know happiness still in there and it's just not yeah. all money <laughs> <laughs> he needs yeah, a break I, he's a busy guy he, he certainly is <laughs> yes he is <laughs> i liked it uh, he's right again his russian voice not bad like i enjoyed it that one might have been better than dan's it sounded uh not to critique his accent it did sound like alba's father a little bit to me <laughs> so maybe it was more albanian than russian but <laughs> Was Joe Rogan ever a cast member of Mad TV, or did he just do cameos? Was he on Mad TV? He did cameos. Oh, I guess there's my answer. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I, I could be. I'm just not aware of it. If he did, um... I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course, he certainly did cameos. I I didn't know he was a cast member. I don't believe he was. But if he's such no. a great impressionist, it would have all lined up. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. If only they had at the time, uh, they needed a Cat Williams impressionist. I think it could have been Joe. Well, back then they could have done that.